CBT News is expanding its reach like never before and is launching in over 70 million broadcasting households. Whether you have Roku, Apple TV, or a mobile device running on Android or iOS, you can now enjoy our engaging, in-depth interviews with dealers, automakers, trade associations, best-selling authors, motivational speakers, and so much more, whenever and wherever you are. Simply search CBT News in the App Store of your smart TV. Welcome to CBT News with Cheyenne Malone. Good morning and welcome to CBT News Daily Newscast. I'm Cheyenne Malone. Thanks so much for joining us today. Here's a look at today's top automotive industry stories. Stumbling off our newscast, Stellantis Ventures has invested in Tiamat Energy, a French-based company developing sodium ion batteries that avoid concerns of lithium and cobalt extraction. The material is more widely available and costs less per kilowatt hour than lithium ion batteries used for EVs. Ned Keurig, Chief Engineer and Technology Officer of Stellantis stated, quote, The Dare Forward 2030 strategic plan aims to achieve carbon net zero by 2038, and exploring more sustainable and affordable battery options is a key part of that plan, end quote. Tesla had a highly successful 2023 However, in the first two weeks of 2024, the company experienced a significant market valuation loss of over $94 billion. This marks the biggest hit the EV maker has seen since its launch in 2010. The decline follows Tesla's aggressive move to lower vehicle prices in an effort to increase demand. Unfortunately, this strategy led to a gradual decline of the company's once substantial profit margins. In Q3 of 2023, Tesla Automotive's gross margin decreased to 16.3% from 27.9% in the same period the year before. Next up, according to a January 15 report from Nikkei, the world's largest financial publication, Toyota intends to produce 10.3 million vehicles globally in 2024, marking the second consecutive year the company achieved a record annual production total. The report further reveals that Toyota aims to manufacture, including its luxury Lexus brand, and 3.4 million units in Japan. Wrapping up our top stories, the Volkswagen Group has unveiled its total sales volume in 2023 was 9.5 million, an 11.8% increase year over year. Sales of the all-electric vehicles from the group reached a record-breaking quarterly result in Q4, representing a 16% increase year over year. BEVs also contributed to the highest level and accounted for 9.5% of the total volume, according to the group. Don't go anywhere, we'll be right back with Pete McGinnis, CEO of eLend Solutions. He's here to discuss the most recent eLend survey results. CBT News is expanding its reach like never before and is launching in over 70 million broadcasting households. Whether you have Roku, Apple TV, or a mobile device running on Android or iOS, you can now enjoy our engaging, in-depth interviews with dealers, automakers, trade associations, best-selling authors, motivational speakers, and so much more, whenever and wherever you are. Simply search CBT News in the App Store of your smart TV. Give us an overview of what the article uh, from your perspective and survey was all about, Pete. Yeah, thanks, Jim. Uh, so what we did is this was actually the second in a series of three national surveys we conducted in 2023 on this subject. So the first sub, uh, survey, it asked questions about affordability, online payment quoting, et cetera. And I just want to share a few of those findings because that really kind of led into what we did in this article with Automotive News. Um, so just a couple of takeaways from the first one, you know, we focused in on some of the findings were that, you know, 68% of dealers said that monthly payment is more equally important as the sales price uh, from a consumer's perspective. 
Um, and so we want to identify that because we know that affordability, you know, average vehicle approach in $50,000, $735 average payment. So we really wanted to drill in and see how, how was the consumer, how was the dealers um, of dealing with that? Mm -hmm. So we looked at the, another question was like around um, the online payment calculator tools. So 67% of dealers said that they do use those tools to help car buyers calculate their monthly payments. Mm -hmm. And then as a result of that, one of the questions was, well, okay, how's that going? And how close are those payments to that? And what was shocking about that was, is that 52% of the dealers responded and said that their online payment quotes should be within $50 of the final contract terms. Payments. Wow. And, you know, I looked at that and went, wow, I agree with you. Wow. Yeah. Um, 36 you know, when you think about average term of 72 months, that's $3,600 over the life of the loan. Right. And so it's questions like that that led to, that really kind of triggered the second survey and says, let's take a deeper dive into this around payment terms and quoting and things of that nature. So um, we looked at that around, and a lot of the results were about inaccurate and misleading online payment quotes. Mm -hmm. And that's really what the, the focus of that survey the second survey was and a lot of the data results that came out of it were quite interesting and obviously got the attention of automotive news as well yeah for sure what are some of the other takeaways from the survey in addition to those okay yeah so we kind of started with things like okay um what's going on here when half the dealers think it's okay to quote a payment within 50 dollars? why why is that okay when consumers are really wanting to know what their true real payments are. Mm -hmm. And so one of, one of the responses we found from the dealers was they said that 98% of the dealers said there's a gap between how dealers want to sell cars and how consumers want to buy. Mm -hmm. And what, what was around that was, you know, consumers, they, they wanna know price, they wanna know the value of their trade in, they want to know what their true real payments are gonna be. Mm -hmm. And that's how they wanted to set up buying so that when they get to the dealership, it's more about, affirmation, confirmation of expectations, yeah. saving time when they get there. And from a dealer's perspective, what we found was it was more around, we're gonna give the customer uh, enough information to get them to raise their hand and then get them to come into the dealership to work and close the deal. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so from that standpoint, they have a different approach to it. So another follow-up question was that led to the answers where 97% of dealers agreed or strongly agreed that there is a trust gap between the consumer and oh, yeah. the dealer when it comes to arriving at the deal. So they've got two different approaches to it that 97% of the dealers saying, uh, you know, that is a problem. There's a trust gap there. So as we start to dive in a little bit more, it was really around the deal and the deal structuring was really where it became ambiguous was around the finance terms. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so the dealers did tell us that, you know, again, 93 percent of the dealers said that the customers wanted to know their payments up front first. Mm -hmm. And 85 percent of these dealers wanted to quote payments up front with mm -hmm. the dealer, with the customer. So they really were <clears throat> pretty closely on aligned with that consumer yeah. and dealer um, in terms of wanting payments and wanting to provide it. So the dealers did. Mm -hmm. And then so we started talking about the quoting payments and based upon that survey first survey where there was a lot of misleading or inaccurate payment quotes, um, we had to ask the question, well, how did you come about providing those inaccurate payments to the dealer? And 94% of the dealers said that they quote payments to the consumer before receiving lender decisions. Wow. So there's a whole lot of guesswork going on yeah, there. Yeah, no question about right? it. Well, that does it for our show today, but we do invite you right back here tomorrow morning on CBTNews.com. And remember, you can stay up to date with the most recent news and trends influencing the retail automotive industry by following us on TikTok, LinkedIn, Facebook, and X, formerly known as Twitter. I'm Cheyenne Malone, and on behalf of all of us at CBT News, see you next time. CBT News, your number one resource for auto industry news and content. CBT News is expanding its reach like never before and is launching in over 70 million broadcasting households. 
Whether you have Roku, Apple TV, or a mobile device running on Android or iOS, you can now enjoy our engaging, in-depth interviews with dealers, automakers, trade associations, best-selling authors, motivational speakers, and so much more, whenever and wherever you are. Simply search CBT News in the App Store of your smart TV 